Hello and welcome to a work in progress episode on Captain's Dry Dock. And in the Dry Dock today, we're making the Stormtrooper First Order belt. Let's make it real. What you're looking at here is the main part of the belt, which is the belt itself. Now, it comes like this in a packet at the time of buying this. Now, this is made by a company called Originally Belts of the First Order, which is a fantastic name for a company that does belts for the First Order. Just go on Facebook. I've popped the link here. And uh, yeah, he'll uh, run through the entire product uh, if you've got any other further questions, which I don't cover. So these are the boxes, or shall I say the parts of the boxes that are attached to the belt. They're part of the Imperial Surplus Kit. And yep, these are also vac form plastic and all this needs to be trimmed off as well. Now on first glance, it's actually really difficult to work out what's what, how it comes together. In fact, I don't know if I've got all the pieces here when I was rummaging around in the box, but some of, it, some of it's recognizable, such as these two parts. Those are the two boxes on the front. And I do recognize these, these go on the side. And there's other bits as well, which are two parts that make up a box, but that's something I'm gonna have to work out later. The last thing that makes up the belt are the two canvas pouches. Now these particular ones come from Trooper Bay. They've got a Facebook presence as well as a website. Now there's a few people out there who's wondering, hang on a minute, they look collapsed. And you're right in thinking that because you actually have to make a structure that goes inside to fill it out to make it all nice and square military like. So I'm gonna have to do one for this and that. As I didn't want to bore you in trimming all this, you know what the procedure is by now if you haven't seen all these videos. Yep, there's a standard uh, scissors you uh, use to actually cut into Tamiya type body kits for your remote controlled cars, so super tough. As suspected, those are the two front boxes that go on the front of the belt, so they go there. Then this is the pouch box, so that um, black canvas pouch, the big one, that fits on the top. So I know what that one is. And then you've got this one, it comes in three parts. This is actually one box. Again, it'd be great if there was instructions, but I kind of worked it out for myself. So there we go. The dimples mean that that's where the fixings go to latch onto the belt. Then that goes behind here like so, gets glued in. Although I have seen work in progresses where they actually make that detachable and you can actually store stuff in there, but I won't be doing that. So this is just gonna be a sealed up empty box. And to add some bit of depth to it, there's this panel that goes on the top with a nice little uh, detail all the way around. So that's one box. Now, this is the issue which I found just now. Uh, there's the other box, so I've only got one piece of it. So that would be the divot piece. That's the, where the attachment goes to the belt. And I'm missing the top bit. Now, I don't know if it didn't come with the kit by accident or if I misplaced it after uh, moving this from one side of the bedroom to the other. But yes, I'm missing one part of it. So I'm gonna have to fashion a new part. So I'll do that later. Otherwise, it's going to cost me a lot in delivery and duty charge to go all the way from the US to the UK just for a little piece of plastic. So there's a challenge. After trimming, I need to make sure that the bottoms of these are flush, meaning that they're completely level. Now to do that, I'm just going to get myself some really coarse 240 wet and dry on a glass flat surface to make sure that this is really level. And then, yep, the noisy bit. I'm on the floor with my 3D printer. If you've seen my channel before, you will know I don't have a lot of space because not all makers on YouTube have amazing workshops, although one day I hope to in the future. But in the meantime, I'm 3D printing that box went, went missing, the box on the belt, the small version 
of this one here. So how I did that was download a copy of Fusion 360. It's a program I've used for the past year now. If you look at my channel, I've made some really complex objects with it. And it's a free download with the option to buy a premium. And it is superb. So if you want to get into 3D model making, this is actually a good project to use. In fact, if you want to make these boxes accurate like they were in the films, the edges are much more sharper, which I might do later. But at the moment, I'm just going to mimic the big box because that's where I got my measurements from. So the width of this is pretty much the same as well as the thickness of the material. And also I'm going by the height of where the step is on this big box. And then it should be absolutely fine. And then you won't even notice a difference once it's painted. Now the filament I'm using, well originally I used a filament called PLA. But thankfully social media reached out to me after about, I don't know, six months printing and said actually it's not the ideal material to use because it's got a tendency to warp under heat. So let's just say I put my armor in a hot car, yeah, it will start shrinking and warping, which isn't a good idea when you've got a prop. So I was advised to use this stuff, PETG. So this stuff is a bit like ABS, but still has the same qualities and you easy, easy usability is PLA. I just need to use a higher temperature. And uh, yeah, this is an ideal material to use for this box. Now that all the panels are ready and trimmed, now I start the procedure for painting, which is sanding with wet and dry, cleaning the surface with alcohol, applying some primer, and after a quick rub down with 1200 wet and dry paper, Three coats of super gloss white. When using spray cans, sometimes it's very hard to get consistency, especially when they start running out of pressure. Now, this was the result. That is what you call an orange peel effect, because obviously it's got that texture, which is not good for someone of the first order. So I needed to get to this stage. See the difference? So that's exactly the same paint job, but this one I treated differently afterwards. And this is what I did. So I got hold of some 1200 wet and dry, a very, very fine grit of sandpaper, and then made sure it's really wet and then rubbed down gently the surface of the part. Once I'd done that, I literally just spent 30 seconds on that, dried it off and then used this stuff. Now this is for headlights when they're fogged up and you rub them down to make them clear again, but essentially it's called T-Cut. It's a rubbing compound, a very fine cream, and then rub that in circles onto this part using a cloth and then wiped it off again. And then I had this. So I went from before to after. Now I'm gonna do the exact same treatment to any part of my armor that ended up like this. It didn't take long at all, because after all, a stormtrooper should not look like an orange. These are the boxes that are attached to the front of the belt. So there's the recognizable front and there's the back into them. And as you can see, the two dimples of how they get attached to the belt themselves. Now there is an issue with these blocks here. Now they're not trimmed. So just imagine that that was cut off there. They are too flat. Now here's the belt here. That is naturally curved. And yeah, it doesn't marry up at all well. Now you can actually uh, bolt this on, but it's not gonna look good or feel good whatsoever. So there are aftermarket parts where people have actually made the blocks to have a radius around here. So it matches up to the belt. But I thought to myself, I'm gonna make my own on Fusion 360 and also, as a bonus to all the viewers, I will make these 3D files available to you to download and print for yourselves. Here's the final result, and I'm absolutely chuffed how these 3D prints turned out. Now, this was the first, uh, first try, and it worked out fantastic. So let me show you the details. So there we go. We've got that lovely curve there, which will marry up to the belt there. Much better than a flat version. And I've also got two holes here because that's how it goes onto the belt. It bolts on and the bolts I'm using 
are these. And there's a good reason why I'm using these particular bolts. It's because if I just give you a closer look, it's got a lovely, great, big, chunky, rounded head because that is gonna be facing towards my body. And the last thing I want is a nasty bolt or a head of a screw digging into me. So it was really important that I wanted it rounded. And there's the actual bolt itself. And I'll show you how that gets fitted into the uh, bracket. That is made purposely for that nut and it can, and it fits completely flush and keeps it there while this bolt is screwed in on the other side with the belt in between. Now, I just wanna give a little bit of a note for those who actually have an Impel Surplus kit that these two panels are slightly different sizes. Hence the fact I made two different files for these blocks because if I just show you, that is actually shorter than that. So that's why there's two files. It's not just one file and you just print twice. There's two different files and that's why. So with all the 3D printed parts, what I've done is hit it with a load of this filler primer. And I mean a load of it to the point it's dripping off because it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna sand it down later. So there we go. Those lines, those uh, print lines are pretty much disappeared. And all I need, all I need to do now is actually sand it down. Just a couple of seconds sanding, and as you can see, there's hardly any trace of print layer lines, and all I need to do now is paint this black. For these, I'm just gonna use some matte black. Now, I reckon it might be satin black, but because I'm gonna be using a clear varnish, it's not gonna really matter. And besides, it's all black, and it's gonna be so close to the belt, you're not gonna really notice that much of a difference. Just a couple of coats of this, and then some clear lacquer, and that is ready. Now that, I'm impressed with. Let's talk about positions. No, 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 not like that. I'm talking about the positions of the boxes on the belt. Now, there must be some type of measurements out there because they are in set positions on the belt. So you've got the long ones, which are on the front, and then you've got the two side ones, and basically there's boxes everywhere. But are there measurements to how far they should be from each other? Well, I actually went on a couple of forums, well, about three forums already so far, and a general consensus is, actually, surprisingly, there isn't. In fact, on the actual set of Star Wars, there are many troopers that have the boxes in different positions, and also it depends on your size. So basically, if you're the size of Jabba the Hutt or the size of Princess Leia, the actual belt is gonna be different sizes to you, which means that the space in between the boxes is also gonna be different, of course. But there is a general consensus of just roughly where they should be. So basically, you've got the two long boxes at the front. They should be dead center to where that uh, snap is. Then you've got the two pouches on the left-hand side of the trooper. Uh, basically, they also cover, cover up the buckle. And then on the right-hand side, you've got the big and small boxes, which are closer together and just slightly further away from the center boxes. And just by looking at lots of reference, I can gauge how far away things should be. So let's give it a go. Getting onto the actual belt, one thing is to note is that I'm not meant to actually measure the belt to my actual waistline. I need to make sure I measure it to the armour because the armour is a little bit wider, obviously, to my waist. So I have to make sure it measures just around here and it's not too tight and not too loose. And the buckle, is actually the female part of the buckle is that comes from the right to the left and it goes underneath the second box here from the left hand side so that's where the buckle should lie so what i need to do now is trim this off and then start sewing it off and then i can progress to add the layers i've trimmed the section i don't need anymore but because it's going to fray if i don't seal it i need to use a bit of fire As that's synthetic, that's just melted the edge and now that won't fray. Next, I need to sew this and uh, keep it all together like so. 
that is secure. So there we are, it's all sewn up. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, no problem, not many people do. You can still make this belt by using a different fastening system, such as rivets or Chicago screws, and just pop in a few holes, and there we go. In fact, I think I have to do that on this belt anyway. Now, the next thing I need to do is locate it on the armor, because this belt isn't actually functional in regards of holding anything up or down, other than keeping the pouches in place on the actual webbing. It needs to have snaps locate the belt. So snaps, if you don't know what that, that is, you will recognize these. They will be on your clothing somewhere. So there's the male on the left-hand side and there's the female on the right-hand side. And I need to actually pop one here on the front and I need to pop a corresponding one on this as well and that also goes for the rear now i'm not going to do show you the butt plate and how i do that in this episode i'll show you in the next episode but yeah i need to actually uh get, make a snap on here so there'll be two snaps on this webbing one for the front and one for the back and what that does that will make sure it stays in place and doesn't slip off because again this belt is not functional. This is just aesthetic, just to keep the pouches uh, in place. And uh, yeah, that's it. So close up here, I've made a hole on this section of the armor. So no worries, all this will be hidden by the belt. And I'm going to install the male part of the snaps. So this little nipple here, that goes all the way through. And then that goes on top. And then what I need is to actually use a stamp like this. Now it comes as a kit. So if you just go on eBay or Amazon, it's super cheap. And then I need to pop this plate behind it, pop this on top and give it a smack with a hammer. Now I can't film it right now because it's quite awkward to do while I film, but you get the idea. And what will happen is that that bit in the middle will mushroom out and keep it all nice and secure. There's the male part of the snap installed. And as you can see, if you just zoom in, how it mushrooms out when you uh, stamp it. And then there we go, the corresponding female on the other side, which is on the belt itself. Now, all I need to do now is just pop it on like so, and you hear it, snap. So that fits perfectly. And I've done exactly the same as you can see right at the back and the corresponding male snap will be on the butt plate. But as I said, mentioned before, I'll talk about that on the next episode when I'm working on the crotch and the butt. That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> oh dear. It's not that type of channel, people. <laughs> Before I forget, if you haven't seen my previous episodes of how I, how to install things into webbing, I use a soldering iron to make a hole through the synthetic webbing, which does one or two things. It makes the hole as well as actually sealing it so it doesn't fray at all. So this is a really good tool tip. If you're gonna make holes into the webbing, use a soldering iron, just poke it all the way through. It takes three belts to make a first order Stormtrooper's belt. So let's just start with the base. This is the nylon bit which I've been working on, which has all the attachments. So this is the practical part of the belt. So we've got the snap there, and we've got the female part of the buckle there. Then on top of that, it will be this great big fat piece of rubber here. Now that's the filling that makes the belt chunkier and makes it flush to the armor. Then on top of that is the aesthetic part. Yep, it's ribbed for the Stormtrooper's pleasure. So this is the thing that gives that first order Stormtrooper look. That's that. Now it all has to be glued down in order. So the glue I'm going to be using is E6000. It's the glue that most stormtroopers and future stormtroopers like to use because it's really flexible, it's strong, and it's great at gluing all different types of material together, just like nylon to rubber. And that's what I'll be using. So all I'm doing here, I've just applied the E6000 glue and I'm spreading it all around with a lollipop stick. So it's a nice thin coat, coat, a nice thin coat all over the rubber, making sure it's not too much that it's gonna squidge out at the edges, which is gonna be a bit of a mess. Now I've got the belt all clamped together so the glue can set, but you can see how I've positioned it. Rather than just laying down flat on the table, I've got it on its edge and actually buckled as if it's around my waist and there's a good reason for that so if you look at a running track <laughs> bear with me on this the outer lanes of the running track are longer than the inside lanes and it's the same that goes for with the belt so the nylon webbing on the inside is actually shorter than the rubber 
outside the two other layers. So if I did glue this all together flat, laying down, and then I actually made it clip together around my waist, I would find it would start to wrinkle and buckle because these would be way too short for, to go around my waist and it will start stretching and it would not look great at all. So that's a really good tip to take away from this if and when you get around to making your own belt. Yeah, so I've got a confession. After I've unclamped this, the top layer can easily be peeled off. Well, when I say easily, it's still stuck on, but all you have to do is just give it a tug and it's off with the glue as well. So obviously rubber is a very hard material to stick to rubber. So I had to try and find another solution. And that solution came in a guise as double-sided sticky tape. Yeah, I know it sounds like a cheap thing, but it does actually work. Or should I say this specific one? So I went on Amazon, looked at the reviews, and what's different about this double-sided sticky tape is that it's very gummy, which means that it really bends well and really clings onto anything it touches. So be careful if you do use it. So I gave it a test and it works. So I'm gonna use that. Just a heads up, so I made a mistake, so you don't have to. So I trimmed too much of this. Uh, so basically this is meant to extend over this buckle, which hides it and just left flapping around. However, it's not a big issue because it's gonna be eventually hid by one of the canvas pouches, but it's something to bear in mind when you do your belt and uh, avoid what I just did, but no big deal. The next step I need to do is install the Chicago screws. There's actually two pairs there. They look like rivets, but instead of actually having them pressed together and mushroom, they screw together, which is fantastic because if I ever change my mind or want to take this apart, I could just unscrew it. The next step is to make holes in here. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I can get hold of a hole punch or a hole making tool, but I don't have either of those. Instead, I'm going to use the good old soldering iron, because that will do one or two things. It will heat through all the way through the rubber and also the synthetic webbing at the back and seal it off so there'll be no fraying. So I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna put a hole around about here. So I need to put in some force and press it all the way through. There we go. So that's gone all the way through there and I'm just gonna do another one right about here. And all I need to do now is just screw them together. So the screw side, or should I say the side which has the slits for the screwdriver, that's on the inside because on the other side, I want it looking all nice and neat like so. The two blocks are now installed and I'm not gonna lie to you, that was really difficult to do. So what I had to do was not just use a soldering iron, but I also had to use a drill because this rubber being two really thick layers and you've got the nylon webbing, was really hard to get through. So I managed to drill two holes and use the soldering iron to actually get through the nylon uh, webbing as well, push through the bolts and what you can see here, there you go, go all the way through and the nuts are attached on the other side and those are really, really secure. Now the next step is to stick on the panels, which I'll do later. At the moment, I'm just gonna fit all the basics and then make sure it all fits, but that's not looking too bad. Okay, you know when I said I'm using a soldering iron and a drill to make the holes through the whole belt so I can feed in the bolts and the elastic? I don't advise you to do that. Get yourself a hole cutter because it's an absolute ball ache trying to make a hole big enough because the thing is when you drill or use a soldering iron, everything just comes back together again because obviously it's rubber. Whereas what you need is a hole cutter which will take that material away so there's a nice hole for you to feed through. If you take anything away from this video, get yourself a hole cutter. The next boxes to install are the two white boxes on the right hand side of the waist. So these are the back parts of the boxes. So as you can imagine, once they're fixed onto the belt, these are glued on here like so. But to actually fix them on the belt, these two braces come with the kit. And all it is is two pieces of elastic bungee cord with two pieces of webbing. That feeds through, you make two holes in the back part of the box two holes through the, through the belt and as you heard that's when I was getting very irritated by making these holes trying to thread these damn elastic things through holes which are closing on themselves is a nightmare and then once you feed it all the way through 
then tie in a knot at the end and they will stay there now when it comes to spacing so they should be around about here so the point about these boxes is that they overlap onto the fire armor and this is what i reckon is going to be low enough so that's how i'm spacing my white boxes now to address those flat collapsed canvas pouches. Now, if you remember, I needed to actually put some type of structure in there to fill them out. So what I did, I got some off cuts of that vac form material and then tried to make my own box. And you know what? It kind of works, but it's rough. I need to finish it and paint it because when you open up the canvas pouch, you don't want to see it all white as well. And I'm still not convinced about its structural integrity and how strong it will be, because you can imagine these are going to be banged around quite a lot. But you know what? Fusion 360, I thought, why not? Let's just make some 3D files. So I went on Fusion 360. This is a really easy project to work on. Essentially, they're just boxes, but I can make them specifically for these pouches. So what I did, I basically opened them up and I measured the length, width and depth of each pouch. And from that, I went on the 3D printer and printed off these three millimeter thick boxes and I did it in black filament so they look futuristic I don't have to do any finishing and they work and because they're made for these pouches they slip perfectly inside with no gaps and gives a fantastic form and do you know what stuff it if you made it this far into the build and the video I'm going to make these 3D files available to you for free to download and so you can print these off. So if you're going to buy those particular pouches, these will fit easily in there. If you made it this far, then congratulations because you're seeing the last piece being attached to the belt to complete it. Now the canvas uh, pouch needs to have this panel attached to it. The canvas pouch automatically comes with Velcro stitched onto it and it comes with the hook side as a sticky part. So you just stick that on the inside of your panel and then perhaps the only easy bit to come together on this uh, belt is this. Done completed and i'm done it's completed finally after two weeks of evening work just trying to get this done and now i've got bags under my eyes because i wanted to get it done last night and finish it up it's completed now this for me is perhaps one of the most difficult challenging parts of the armor to build so far and bear in mind i've done the abdomen the chest plate and the yoke and uh but this there are so many parts that go into this belt and also the different types of materials you've got plastic you've got nylon webbing you've got rubber and somehow all of it's got to connect with each other and some of it doesn't like to connect with each other mainly the rubber so i use a mixture of glue tape um prayers and <laughs> chicago screws to hold everything in place but the most important thing is that it all works and it sits well and it looks great. I would perhaps revisit this part of the armour again because I learned so much and now I know how it will come together. It's easy when you know how. I'll do another one. And plus I know all the materials. They're really, really cheap. You can buy them individually on eBay. So I might do that in the future. But in the meantime, this is actually looking pretty good as a first attempt. Now I'm going to show you round about and how it all comes together on this part of the admin armour. So let's start with the front. So you've got the boxes. Again, no idea what these boxes do, but someone out there might know. So there's a two um, long rectangular boxes either side. One's got a feature on it on the left hand side of the trooper and you've got the plain one on the right hand side. And they go either side of the snap which is behind the belt which connects to the abdomen and what that does it keeps it all in place and then I've got the canvas pouches on my left hand side and they contain the 3D uh, prints which keep the structure and the form of the pouches which make them really really useful and also uh, the pouches hide the buckle as well because you can't see buckles in the Star Wars universe because did they use them? Well not these plastic ones so you need to hide those because stormtroopers have got to look like an iPhone, it's got to look sleek. Then on the right hand side 
Yes, more boxes. No idea what they're for. Perhaps it was for the ammunition. So you got a long one and a shorter one. The shorter one I had to replace with a 3D print, but those that go on the right hand side and they're connected with those elastic bungees. Then on the back, I've got myself another hidden rivet and that goes on the butt plate, which will be on the next episode. And that holds up the rear of the belt to the armor, keeping it flush. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you. It's a long, long video, I know, but as you saw, there's a lot to this belt that pictures on work in progresses can't really sum up. So hopefully any mistakes I made, which I put my hands up to, you will avoid when you make yours. But in the meantime, hope you enjoyed this build and the next episode will be the crotch and the butt plate, which will be simple or hopefully it's much more simpler. I need some respite. In the meantime, you take care and I'll see you later.